Hello, welcome back to the channel. It's Sandy here from The Curtain Boutique. Today I'm going to show you how to make this lovely pair of um, pinch pleat curtains. There's three widths in this pair, so that will mean one and a half each side. Um, and these curtains are quite simple to make. Um, we're going to be doing something a little bit different to how we normally do it. We're going to be uh, using this stunning fabric from Prestigious. Um, I particularly love this print because I love the pink and the navy. So without further ado, let's get on with the tutorial. So to start with, you lay your curtain face side down, flat on the bench, and you turn it in about five centimetres from the edge of the curtain to the beginning of the salvage. You can cut the salvage off if you like, but I tend to leave it in. So once you've done the um, turning in and you pressed it um, all the way up to the top, uh, you then repeat this on the other side of the curtain. So once you've turned your sides in, you then take the fabric up to about 15 centimeters. You can do it a little bit less if you, you know, if you haven't got that much allowance. But the more you do, uh, the more impressive it looks. I mean, don't do it any more than um, 15 centimeters. That's all you really need. Then you pull it back once you've done your first crease, and then you turn it uh, the bottom part up to the bottom crease, uh, giving you a second crease, which will be your sew crease line so then you go pressing it all along um, so it's nice and flat so now you turn your attention to the side bit and tuck that in nicely you can give it a press but um, usually if it's cotton it will sort of just crease nicely anyway so we fold the hem up um, and get it sort of sitting nicely um, paying attention to the side so that it's all nicely tucked in um, because obviously once the lining goes in that's where we'll sew um, and the lining will actually go inside there and sit right at the bottom of the curtain and then it will go along the side um, by taking in about an inch, uh, tucking in um, about an inch rather um, and that's where it will all be hand stitched along there. So this is the time now that we're going to need to iron our curtain nice and flat before the lining goes in um, because you can't really see once the lining goes in um, what's going on with the, the top of the curtain so just you just need to give it a really good press. Um, this particular fabric has, is cotton but it's, it just creases really easily so I did find myself having to iron this quite a bit. Okay, so now that we've given everything a good press, I'm now going to do the finished drop. So I'll position the tape measure at the bottom of the curtain and then I will obviously bring it up, <laughs> holding on to it, making sure it doesn't move and then bringing it to the top. Now I have already sort of put a crease in there from just before. I'm just showing you how, how I've actually done it. So um, you obviously have to adjust the bottom and make sure it's correct. But um, I had already done it, so I didn't really need to do that on this occasion. But usually I would go back down to the bottom, check that it's at the bottom before I mark um, the top with either a, uh, the, the iron or a pin. But obviously on this occasion, it's all already done, so it's all marked in with a, with an iron so that's my buckram line where I will position the buckram once we've got the lining in. Right so now I'm going to work on the sides of the curtains and start putting the herringbone stitch in to keep it in place. I've measured from the top and worked myself down to about seven inches which is the size of the buckram so I've given myself a little bit of room to get the actual buckram in but as I'm doing here you can see that I'm sort of like casting off and then I'm doing the herringbone which is sort of like not too small but you know enough to keep it nice and secure it's basically into the salvage and then a couple of fibres into the curtain, back into the salvage, as you can see, making little triangles. Um, and you do that all the way down to the bottom. Um, and this is all done before the lining goes in, obviously. Right, so we positioned the lining um, with the seams matching each other because um, that's where we'll do our lock-in stitch and we've taken the lining right to the bottom of the curtain. Um, you can see that the actual um, seams are lining up really nicely and 
obviously I'm going to be positioning it in a way where we can lock it in without you seeing the stitch line on the reverse. Okay, so now that we've got everything laying flat, I'm lifting the lining over so that it will expose both of the seams um, so I can go along here and just sort of line the seams up. I'll turn the camera around in a little bit in a little while so you can sort of see what I'm doing but basically I'm just lining it all up and flattening it away from me so that um, there aren't any puckers um, and then we can start doing our locking in stitch right so this is where our seams need to be and that is where I'm going to start sewing in a second um, you have to position the lining so that um, you know it's sort of at the bottom of the curtain but you have an allowance um, oh gosh if you're wondering what my uh, these things are on my hands the scratch marks that's from my cat um, she she doesn't always scratch me but you know sometimes I pick her up and then she wants to get down quickly and I get attacked <laughs> so I haven't been in a fight <laughs> but anyway um, so you position uh, the lining about sort of a third of a centimeter from the bottom um, and then obviously that'll get tucked in once I've locked the seams together so I'm now going to um, I've just cast it off but I'm just going to put another stitch in there so that I'm nice and secure by the way I've got a camera in front of me so I'm finding it a bit hard to sew here without attacking the hem <laughs> <laughs> and then we're getting cotton everywhere and knots and oh dear it, this always happens when I'm filming you know anyway we're going along here um I'm going to leave 10 inch um increments so that um we're nicely locked in um and this lining isn't going to go anywhere so I've gone 10 inches up and I'm just sort of making sure that um, the seams are nice and straight and they're in line and then I'll just continue to go up the curtain every 10 inches and then I'll stop at about 7 inches from the top because obviously the buckram is 6 and just give a an inch you know a little inch allowance um, because we obviously need to get the buckram underneath the lining so we don't want to be having uh, locking in stitches get in the way of us putting our buckram in right so we've done our locking in stitches and we pulled our lining back we're now going to turn our hem down and make sure the lining is positioned right at the bottom of the curtain get any uh, sort of puckers out with the iron and make sure it's really nice and flat and then we're going to fold the um, hem back up in place um, for our stitching so I'm going to be pinning this along so that when we're stitching it doesn't move and obviously get that nice and sort of flat and give it a press Take away any bits of cotton that are lingering. So we've turned the curtain around now that we've done the hem and we're now doing our sides. So the sides are obviously herringboned in and we're now going to be cutting off any excess lining. So I'll just literally run my sort of nail across the edge and I can see the crease. But you can turn it over and sort of like mark it out from where you are there but um, then just take off about an inch, an inch and a half um, from the edge. Look at all the cotton on me. When I go home, I always have cotton on me and my family always laugh at me saying, oh, here comes the cotton lady. <laughs> So now that we've cut away our excess lining, we're now going to turn under about an inch all the way um, along the side there. I'm just checking with my ruler. <laughs> yeah, I sometimes have to check with my ruler, you know. Sometimes it looks a lot less or a lot more, and I'm thinking, no, that doesn't look right. And then it is. <laughs> oh, I think it's my eyesight. It's going. <laughs> anyway, you tuck, tuck it all under, all the way to the bottom, um, and then when you get to... The very bottom of the um, hem you have to lift the hem up a little bit to tuck it under in that corner there where I am there and um, yeah let's get it all nice and tucked in and then I shall pin it in place 
Right, so the lining is right at the bottom like this in the corner, um, making sure um, we've got the inch allowance from the um, edge of the lining to the curtain end. And then I'm going to tuck all the sides in and start pinning. So now I'm starting to put my pins in the side ready to do my hand stitching. So I carry on pinning to the top, uh, making sure that I leave um, an allowance of about sort of eight inches so I can get my buckram in. Um, here I am measuring out my eight inches and I will put a pin there and make sure I don't sew anything past that pin. Okay, so I'm going to start sewing along the hem first before I make my way up to the sides. That's the way I always do it. And I'm just starting on the seam. I've done knot in the cotton. I'm pulling back the hem and then I'm going behind and up. And then I'm going to sort of like cast off, or cast on rather here, uh, putting in a couple of stitches um, before I start to make that nice and secure. And then we're just going to do the normal sort of like um, invisible stitch that we usually do, which is um, going through the lining and out through the actual um, fabric on the very edge that is. Um, and don't go through to the face. Make sure um, your stitching is literally going through like the little channel of the lining. Um, it's quite bulky there. I couldn't get my needle in. Sometimes your needles get a bit blunt. <laughs> All this hand sewing that I do every day. Um, but yeah, this is you make your stitches nice and small, especially on the hem. It's got to be really strong there. So make sure they're about half half an inch. Um, yeah, very small. Like I don't know one and a half centimetres actually, uh, to be exact, is a good size to make your stitches. And you just carry on to the corner. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do the corner um, of the hem. So I've got to the very end and I'm just going to leave that pin in there because that will just stop it from moving. So keep your stitches really nice and small because this is where you want it to be lovely and particularly lovely and neat. Not that you don't want it all to be nice and neat, but particularly in the corner. Okay, so tuck that little bit of fabric in there so you don't see that. Okay, and hold that there in place and well, you could just put a pin there. Now that I've passed that pin mark, you can now put your pin there and then just take these very small here. And then go right into the very corner of the hem and anchor that a little tiny bit more than the other stitches because you don't want that bit to move that's like quite important that that stays there and then just go into that little channel there picking up your hem at the side and then just carry on through keeping your stitches really tiny Keeping it lovely and neat. Now 
make sure you pull it quite tight in fact there I could have gone a little bit tighter so just pull that one through like that pull that one through like that and then go back on yourself you don't want any gaps at all it's a lovely sunny day today we've got some lovely sunshine on my work just know it you always get a knot right at the end of a mitre or right at the end of the bit where you least want a knot oh okay let's try and work this out okay gone and then right at the very end And then when I get to the corner, I literally over sew just a few times, keep it right on the spot. Keep it really neat like that. I'll just do one more to secure it. got a really nice edge and now I'm going to start sewing up my seam here I'm using exactly the same stitch the slip stitch um, invisible stitching all the way up to the top of the curtain so I'm just going to remind you how to do the slip stitch so I started from the very bottom here and worked up and so you go into the fabric don't go on that side so you don't see anything on this side so you're into the fabric for about half a half a inch through the lining on the very end and pull through again through to the lining and pull it's very easy you just got to be careful that when you go into the fabric, you go straight. Don't go down because you'll end up picking up the outside of the face fabric. So just go in, but you'll feel yourself like it. Feel you feel your way through. And you'll see. You'll feel that you can go all the way straight without catching the bottom of the other side. So keep your stitches very small along here because this is where anyone that will look at it will see if that you know if the stitches aren't very secure or they're not very small and neat they they'll tell right so I've done the sewing along the first side and now I'm going around the bench and I'm putting some pins along the side of the curtain that's just off the bench so that when I move this curtain it's not going to go anywhere. I mean, I know I've already locked it in on the seam, but I always double, you know, double lock it in. So I'll, I'll lock, the, lock it in with pins as well. And I'm just sort of like making it nice and flat and pinning in the top as well before I move it. Because um, obviously when I um, put the buckram in, I shall turn the curtain around. And if I've got these pins in at the top, that will make sure the curtain is nice and secure and it's not going to move about when I turn it. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna pull the remaining curtain onto the bench so that I can finish the other side. And um, as I've put the pins in, that's held it in place and I will start sort of like flattening it all out um, and getting it nice and straight. I'll make sure that everything is on the bench. And um, when you're flattening it out, please make sure you don't brush your hands against a pin <laughs> because that is the time where you're going to most hurt yourself if you do that the amount of times I've done this and really like honestly I've got the most excruciating pain on my thumb where I've done that and um, it's really painful so be really careful here <laughs> Um, so I'm straightening the curtain on the bench so that I've got it sort of like equal amounts along the sides and along the bottom um, because I like to have it all nice and straight. Um, I just can't work with it if it's all wonky. And then I'm just sort of flattening the lining out, being very careful not to hurt myself here. And then tucking it um, under the hem there. Okay, so now we're at the bottom of the curtain and we've turned the camera around and I'm pulling the lining right to the bottom there, making sure that it's all nicely tucked in and that the lining, uh, that the hem is nice and straight. Um, and then I'll probably put some pins in or a pin in or something to secure it um, before I start um, sorting out the sides there. So you can see that I've got my... Um, my lovely nails, <laughs> non-existent nails, because I've not had a chance to go to um, to get a manicure at all. It's yeah, you know, I've just been so busy with Christmas stuff. It's like crazy out there, so can't get an appointment. Can't seem to get out of the shop anyway. So I'm now going to cut away my excess lining, um, and I usually just run along with the scissors as straight as I can. Um, and go about an inch past my little crease line that I made with my lovely nails. So then we will tuck the lining under like we did the other side, leaving an inch um, allowance. And then I will put some pins in and then I will start sewing the side up exactly how I did the other side. Okay, so we've done both sides now and we've left the seven inch allowance at the top so that we can get our buckram in. I'm now going along and taking all the pins out that, was, that were holding everything in place and I will then start positioning um, my buckram in the top. So I'll pull back the um, top allowance um, to expose the uh, crease line. Um, and obviously that is where I'm going to put my buckram along there. So the buckram's been placed, I'm using a single fusible buckram. So the fusible side will be facing up, as you can see it's quite shiny. And I will position the buckram right at the corner there along the crease line. And then it will fold like, like this. Um, obviously you've got your lovely crease line from where you did your finish drop so that is your the top of your curtain make sure it's all along the very top and there aren't any sort of like it doesn't drop at all and obviously when you pull back your um, top of the curtain make sure that it's right sort of like quite sort of tightly pulled down so you, you don't have any excess and that the buckram is right at the very top and um, on the sides here I will make like little kind of little mitres um, they won't be pure mitres but I will make them into a kind of mitre so that um, it will all look really nice once the lining is pulled to the top of the curtain so it will look like that where you've tucked it under and then the lining will come up and then be tucked under it's very hard to do it with one hand because i didn't have anywhere to position the camera so i'm doing it one-handedly here guys so yeah just go along like this tucking it under so i'm now going to tuck the um rest of the lining under and position the corner nicely just get it looking nice really and then I shall start pinning it all in place. 
Okay, so we've tucked the lining under all the way now to the left hand side and I'm just going to pop a pin in the corner there to secure that. It's quite hard to do it in the corner but get a large pin if you can. And then I'm pinning down to where I need to sew to. That's the seven inches that I left the gap at the top to get the buckram in. Um, and then I'm going to just continue pinning any areas that I've missed as I've gone along. So I'm now going to go all the way back to where I left my um, long piece of thread, which as you can see is at the side here. So I, carry, I was sewing all the way up and then when I got to the seven inches before the top, I uh, left the thread hanging so that I could just pick it up and then start sewing from there. So now we've sewn along the top, we will fold our curtain in half and we can start marking out our pleats and spaces with our trusty pins. So um, we're marking out the first um, return, which um, obviously there'll be one at one end and one at the other, but because we're putting one in there, we're obviously going to do the corresponding one at the bottom. So that will give us our two returns straight away and we won't have to sort of like it will just take twice as long to do it with the curtain flat which is why we always fold it in half because it just seems a bit silly to do it the other way really doesn't it especially when it's really long because then you can get the whole thing on the bench as well and it doesn't seem like you're sort of pinning it for ages even though you're doing the same amount of pins as if you would be doing it flat but it just seems much quicker doing it like this so now we're going on to our pleats uh, so obviously you always have a pleat after a space. So the pleat we're doing here, I think is 16.6, I think. Generally as a rule of thumb, your pleat should be around about 18 centimeters to have a really nice double pleat, but it really depends on how much fabric you've got. You know, um, sometimes you're a bit short and you have to make them a bit smaller, but I think these will be fine. So we've got the 16.6 there and then the spaces are 15.5. So we will then put, you know, obviously a pin underneath now for the other pleat. So if you sort of imagine that, you know, when you're doing uh, a width of fabric, you have four pleats. And because this is a width and a half, we've got six pleats in this one curtain. So, you know, we're going to be having sort of three along the top and three along the bottom. Uh, although it doesn't look like there's going to be a, a, much fabric, there is. It's just a bit deceiving from that angle, isn't it? So now we're going to put our um, our space in. And I always mark it so that it's um, the actual amount against the pin. So like the 15.5 will sit on the pin. And then I will mark it from there to the edge of the ruler. Because I've got one of those rulers where you don't have the little gap before it actually starts it starts straight from that very end um i thoroughly recommend these rulers by the way they really are good so yeah we go along i'm just marking the top at the moment so that i'm definitely okay because sometimes it might be slightly out and you might have to sort of like jiggle it about um but the odd half a centimeter or you know it's not going to make much difference um when you've actually got your pleats made up so uh, here i am putting in another pleat i think yeah is that another pleat or is that a space can't see but yeah so we go along and then obviously the last thing we do will be a space and um, because the space is off 15.5 that means it's going to be a seven point eight or ish um for the end to you know coming in because obviously you've got 7.8 one side and 7.8 underneath so that's your that's your whole space there so that is how we do that 
Okay, so we've pinned all along and we're now going to um, start making our pleats um, by sort of pinning them in place before we go to the machine. So um, if you just make sure that it's really nice and straight along the top and the pins are um, right next to each other, the top and the bottom ones, um, and then we will put a pin right at the bottom of the buckram where I've got my thumb there and then we know that that's where we've got to do our row of stitching for our pleat. So now that we've done this pleat we now go to the next two pleats and marry those two together. Again making sure the curtain um, is really nice and straight along the top and the two pins are on top of each other there. So you can sort of see where what I'm doing there. I'm just making sure it's really straight along the top and then nice and flat along the sides. Make the crease where your pleat is so that we know that's gonna stay in place. And then get your pin and position that at the bottom of the buckram again so that, that one will stay in place before we start sewing it at the machine. And then you've made two pleats there. So then we'll go on to the next one, pull it along and fold it over to marry the next two. So it's quite easy really, you just keep going along, straightening it out on the top, make sure the top's really, really straight like this. Um, and then folding the side and then just putting your pin in at the bottom of the buckram. Okay, so I'm at the machine now and I'm going to show you how to do one of the pleats. So I'm just getting everything sort of like straight and without hurting myself with the pins. And I'm putting the two pins together. And then I'm gonna take the back pin out once I'm holding it firmly in place and then positioning it in front of the pin on the top so that I can see where I'm needing to go making sure that everything is sort of like you know secure and then take the back pin out position it under the machine put the needle down and the presser footer down and then I'm going to do um, a back space and a forward space just to start me off and then I shall sew all the way down to the pin at the bottom of the buckram and then backspace there to make it nice and secure. And then I'll take it out and then cut all the threads. Make sure you've got some nice sharp scissors makes the job so much easier. Then I'm going to um, fold the pleat so that it's flat and we have equal amounts of pleat from the middle to the left and the middle to the right, if you get what I mean. So we've got, you know, the same amount there, all the way along, to, along down to the bottom of the buckram flatten it with your fingers you know and then pinch it exactly how, how I've done there and then you've got a really nice pleat but we've got to secure it where my thumb is so we are going to do this with the machine even though a lot of people do it by hand if it was a three triple pleat like this I would probably do it by hand but because it's only two I will use the machine but we're only doing very small stitches we're not doing like a massive run of stitching along there. We don't want anyone to see that. So we're just going to literally um, over sew with the needle a few times, slightly going back and forth, but only very slightly. You've got to really, or you could just sew without moving, but it's just to secure the actual pleat. And it looks really neat and is so much more secure than as if you were sewing it. I mean, it's tiny, you can hardly see it. 
always make sure you use contrasting thread so you know that you know if the main body of your fabric is white then you use white thread or cream but yeah so you can't see anything it's just a really nice little secure stitch and then all you need to do is stitch at the very top of the pleat a few times um just along the top there to secure that in place so that it doesn't move we have our lovely curtain finished uh, hanging on the pole and i'm really pleased with it it's hanging beautifully and um, i've really enjoyed this tutorial today and i hope you have and i look forward to you joining me in the future please like this video because it helps my channel and subscribe if you haven't already done so and press the bell button so that you see future videos. Take care everyone. See you soon. Bye.